Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is get up vector. Running our quick little example here. You'll notice the line trace shooting up, and it's kind of hard to see, but it's shooting up about 4,000 units. And of course, if I had something above me, I would go ahead and stop it because of the line trace. Now I'm using the get up vector nodes in order to determine which way is up on my character. Well, let's go ahead and look at the nodes itself. We have three different nodes. We have an actor version, a scene component version, and a rotator version. And the purpose of this is to give us the value that is up for our actor, assuming we've set it up correctly. Well, what do I mean by up? Up is going to be Z positive. Here's our little character guy here. Let's zoom in on him. And if you notice the transform in the middle, we have Z, which is blue, positive for up, X forward, and Y to my right. So here's my little guy here. Here's his back, a little nose in the front. So if I was to properly set up my character here, where Z is up, and I asked it, okay, hey character, what is your up vector? Which direction currently, based on where you're at in the world, is up for you? Not necessarily up for the world, but you. Where's your up? It's going to say, okay, well, where's my Z? And it's going to give me whatever the value of the Z is locally. So even if I've rotated my character, whatever is Z on this character itself here is going to be my up vector. Now the up vector node is going to be normalized. That means it's going to be between 0 and 1. Let me show you that. Let's go ahead and print string. Drag my vector over here. And let's hit play. And we'll get a bunch of numbers on the left hand side. And it's always going to be 1. Well, it's always going to be 1 because my character doesn't rotate. So my camera is rotating. But my character, if you notice, is static. So my x and my y, basically, my vector is zero. There's no values on the x or the y for my up. And my z is one because up for my character is straight up. If I was to rotate my character, it's going to be different. So let's actually, I'm going off the capsule so I can't do that. So let me show you what I can do. So the other versions here, this is going off the actor. The actor is going to be my root. And because the way I have it set up, my root is always going to be facing up. But we have a scene component and a rotator version here. Let's go ahead and hook up the scene component version. And we're going to hook up the scene component version here as well. And this is basically going to take a scene component and tell me which way is up. Now let's do something different here and let's grab the mesh. This is my character's mesh, this little square here. And let's ask it which direction is the up vector. And let's go over here and plug it into here. And let's hit play. And the up vector of the mesh, well, it's going to be the same. Let's take this mesh and let's rotate it just for an example. Or we'll rotate something like that. We'll hit play. Well, even though my mesh is rotated, well, look at that. Our up vector is actually different. And if we were to go over here and we were to hit play, and let's eject out and look, there's the up vector of our mesh. The world space is like that, but if I was to switch to the local space, which is kind of hard to do in here, uh, if we go into here, here we go. There's our up vector for our mesh. Our mesh has been rotated, but the up on the mesh is still going to be right there. So when I run this, my up vector on the mesh, because I've now rotated the mesh, is kind of at an angle. It's what, 60 degree angle, whatever I've rotated here? Yeah, it looks like about 60. Where's my rotator? Okay, negative 50 degrees is what I rotated. Let me set it back to zero so it's not as weird. And we'll run it, and we'll see it back to here. There we go. Now let me show you this in actual motion. Let me grab my cube, this little cube hanging off to the side here. Let me tell him to rotate, and let me tell him to fire off a up rotator. Let's go back over here. Let's disable our debug text so it doesn't annoy us, and let's hit play. And here's our little cube. Now our little cube is firing up, and it's spinning along its Z. 
Now, because it's spinning, kind of like our player does, our up is never going to change. The little cone right there indicates forward. However, let's rotate it along a different axis. Let's rotate it along our X. Let's roll this sucker like that. And let's put our Z back up. Let's hit play. There we go. Now you'll notice it's spinning along. It's rolling. But our X, our X of this cube, which way is up on our cube, is being kept intact. We are saying, hey, Mr. Cube, I don't care. Well, I know you're rotated, Mr. Cube. And I know that Z for the world is going to be in this direction. But I don't want the Z of the world. I want to know for you, which way is your Z? Which way is your up? Even though you're spinning around in a vacuum of space. And it's going to say it's this direction. And then I go, okay, well, let's do a line trace from there. And that's why it's going to be relatively useful because it's for that actor itself, not necessarily in the world. So if your character is flipped upside down, but you want to know where his hat's at, you can know which way his, his up is. And that's what our up vector is for. And, of course, the last version is going to be a rotator. Simply going to take in a rotator in case you don't have an actor or a scene component. If you happen to have a rotator, it'll give you the up vector. In this case, I could just plug in the world rotation for my capsule component, but we're going to get the same result back as if I just did the actor. It's useful if you just you don't have a scene component or an actor. You're going to use these most of the time. Now there's a couple things to note. I told you it was normalized. That means it's going to give me back a small value. When I printed out this right here, and what would be an easy way of doing this? Let's actually do this. Um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Um, yeah, let's do this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and print string. We're going to print the string out from the actual cube that's spinning. Let me make sure this not hooked up. And hit play. And we have the cubes value here. Now, if you notice the numbers, we have a zero for the x because it's not rotating along the x at all. We have no value on the x. There's no distance. And our y and our z are changing. But you notice they're small numbers. They're between negative 1 and positive 1. It's going to give us a local normalized value, a very small number between negative 1 and positive 1, for which direction it is. So if you actually want to use it, you're probably going to have to multiply it. In this case, I'm taking my up vector, multiply it by 4,000, so saying, hey, figure out which way is up, and then go 4,000 units in that direction, which is what? Up, go 4,000 in that direction. And that's going to, I'm going to feed that into my endpoint. So keep that in mind. You need to have your vector usually a larger value if you need to check something that's at a distance from it. But if you just want to know which way is up relative, then you can just probably go with the straight value. Now let's go ahead and let's get the down vector. And you'll notice it doesn't exist. Well, there's no down because it's kind of a silly use of a node. The opposite of up is down. So in math terms, the opposite of this value is going to be the negative value of it. Or the opposite of the negative value is going to be the positive value. So if we were to take this output, multiply by a float, negative 1, and then fed that into our information like this. And we go ahead and we hit play. This is actually not really going to show much difference here, technically, because of the way it's rotating. But we now have the downwards version. And if you look at my character itself, you'll notice he's now shooting downwards. So you'll see, actually, that's correct. I'm, I didn't change it in here. We only changed it in here. So what I'm doing is saying, hey, get the up vector, multiply it by negative 1, and then add 4,000 units. So when I hit play, you'll notice my little guy here, and as he jumps, it still shoots out, and he knows which way is down. So there you go. That right there is a useful use, useful use, helpful use, a good use of the down, well, technically the negative up vector. How do I know if I'm on the ground, or how do I know what's below me? Or how do I know how far I am from the ground? Maybe, for example, whoops, that's a good thing. Maybe if, for example, I do a line trace down like that, and it's more than 100 units, I know I'm in the air, and I need to play a falling animation. Or I need to have them float, or something like that. You can use the negative up vector to determine how far you are from a surface.
Or, for example, you were crouching and you told the character to uncrouch, fire a line cast using the up vector, see what the distance is to the next surface above you, determine if you have enough space to uncrouch. So there's two examples of using your up vector and your negative up or your down vector. So that's going to go ahead and wrap this up. To summarize, you have three different versions, actor version, scene component, and a rotator version. It's going to give you a normalized value, so basically something between negative 1 and 1, a length of 1, basically. And it's going to tell you for this actor, scene component, or the rotator you put in, which way is up. But keep in mind it's really important to make sure you do use the coordinate system that Unreal has provided with you, which is Z up. So of course if I rotate things, or I move things, or I change things, or I have them set up differently, you may find out that when I ask for the up using the get vector nodes, it actually gives me something else because my character is not up. It thinks it's up is actually left.